This is going to be lecture outline 10. It's going to be about Lewis structures. Actually, lecture outline 11 is about shape of molecules. Let's start by talking about chemical bonding. And there are two types of chemical bonds. There are ionic bonds and there are covalent bonds. And both of them involve each atom gaining, losing, or sharing electrons to get the same valence electrons as the nearest noble gas. Because it's eight, this is called the octet rule, since oct means eight. And uh, because noble gases, except for helium, have eight valence electrons. So what we were going to see is that for chemical bonding, for ionic chemical bonding, that's going to be involve, the involving atoms gaining or losing uh, uh, electrons. And sharing electrons, that's going to be covalent, since co basically means shared, or um, and valence uh, is going to refer to the fact that these are going to be valence electrons. And so that's why we start with Lewis dot formulas for atoms. They display the valence electrons as dots around the chemical symbol. And we've talked about valence electrons, and we've done it certainly for atoms. We're also going to do it for ions, since we're going to be making ions for ionic bonding. And before we talk about uh, valence electrons again, let's talk about electron configurations. Now, chlorine atom, I'm going to do the whole uh, valence, so the whole, sorry, electron configuration. Chlorine's right here. It has 17 protons per atom. It has 17 electrons. And if we put those 17 electrons into the sublevels, there would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. I meant 2 didn't show up there. There we go. And then 3s2, 3p5. And that is going to be 17 electrons. We've said that the valence electrons are all of the s and p electrons for the highest principal energy level. So the highest principal energy level here is n equals 3. And within n equals 3, there are 7 electrons. So that means there are 7 valence electrons. And uh, incidentally, I said the highest value of n, the s and p electrons, that will always be the case. Like there's, it'll always just be the highest value of n. Um, hmm. No, I guess not. So it's, let's keep in mind that it's only the S and P electrons because sometimes there will be D electrons as well. And we just want to make sure valence electrons are just the highest value of n, S and P electrons. Yeah, sorry about that. Now, if we have seven valence electrons, and the Lewis dot formula, it has uh, the electrons as dots around the chemical symbol. So Cl is the chemical symbol for chlorine. And there's, I'm going to put seven dots around it. And I'm going to do them on pairs on the north, south, east, and west portion uh, directions of the atom. So, uh, and this will help us later. There's no real reason that we know of yet to do it, but this will help us later when we talk more about bonding. And if you just put seven dots, that's fine, but typically it's better. And this single dot could be on any of the sides. It just so worked out to be on the uh, right or west portion here. Now let's do something similar for the chloride ion, Cl minus, that's a minus in there. Hopefully you can see that. And chloride, remember, is a typical ion that chlorine forms. Since it's a minus and electrons are negative, that means there are actually 18 electrons. One more electron. And uh, let's see. So this time I'll do it with a noble gas core. So neon will be the first 10 electrons there. And then it will be 3s2, 3p6. And for n equals 3, there will be 8 valence electrons. 
And that's what we mean by the octet rule. The octet rule says that, um, that right? So uh, chloride is the typical ion that we see for chlorine. Why does it form? Well, now we have a little more understanding because it forms because of the octet rule saying that each atom wants eight valence electrons. And I can say a little bit more about that. So uh, first off, the octet rule rules everything we're going to be doing for the next couple weeks. Um, but then it turns out that the noble gases are very stable. They have stable electron configurations. Colon, and that means they are largely unreactive. And that's, an, so, so, so largely unreactive or not reactive is another way of saying stable uh, electrons or stable atoms. What it means is, so if it doesn't want to react, the electrons it has are uh, stable or uh, happy or low energy, largely unreactive, low energy. And other species, like a chlorine atom, is more reactive because it does not have eight valence electrons, it has seven. And then once it becomes such that it has eight valence electrons, it becomes largely unreactive as well. So chloride ion, one of the reasons chloride ions exist so much is because they are large, largely unreactive, similar to a noble gas. Although it's a little different, but that's the general idea. So the octet rule rules, and uh, that's for sure. Here, let's get uh, multicolor exclamation points for the octet rule. Uh, and now, finally, let's do the Lewis dot formula for the chloride ion. And it will have eight dots. And it has to have square brackets and a minus sign. The square brackets and the minus sign means that th that's our way of saying that somewhere in here, the, there's one more electron. And... Um, because otherwise it, it, it wouldn't make sense. Um, we have to show the charge on that uh, species, that ion, if you will. Now, sodium. Uh, sodium is element number 11. It's going to have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. And it's going to have one valence electron. And it's going to have uh, just one dot. And again, it could be the left, right, up or down, but as long as it's got one dot. And then here, to take sodium ion, that means that since it's positively charged, we're going to remove one electron, which means that it will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And I'm not gonna use a noble gas core here because now that we've lost our 3s1 electron, and we should know that we lose electrons from the highest value of n, and then if we lost an electron here, it would be the highest value of the, you know, s or p or d that we would lose first. Since there's only 3s1, we um, take that one away, and now the valence electrons are in n equals two, and there are eight valence electrons. And we can write Na with eight valence electrons. Square brackets. And a plus symbol. The plus symbol saying that we've lost one electron. And sometimes people do it just with sodium with no valence electrons. But we know that that's not true because the octet rule rules and we have to have eight somewhere.
Let's do a couple other examples. Uh, this is going to be the iron atom, and iron on the periodic table is element number 26, so it's going to have 26 electrons. This time we're going to do a noble gas core. So here is iron. We're going to go back on the periodic table to argon, so our noble gas core will be argon. And that argon is the first 18 electrons. And according to the shape of the periodic table, although however you do it is fine, we go to the 4s2, 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that is the electron configuration for argon. And now here's again where it comes in. So n equals 4. So highest value of n, S and P electrons only. So we're going to have two valence electrons. And we're going to have uh, Fe. And uh, we're just going to draw it as a pair. Although this one, it, it's okay if you do them separately too. But we'll do it like this. That's good. There's no brackets needed because there's no charge. Now let's do the Fe3+. Plus. So Fe3+, plus is going to be 26 electrons minus 3 electrons. So we only have 23 electrons left. And we lose electrons from the highest value of n. So... Uh, so that's going to be n equals 4. So the first two electrons to leave are these ones, not 3d6, 4s2. And so we're going to lose two of these electrons, and we're going to lose one of these electrons. And the 4s2 just disappears because it's empty. It's still there, right? All the sublevels are there. They're just empty, so we don't have to write them. I mean, you could write 4s0 as well, but typically it's just written like, uh, argon 3d5 and similar to what happened for sodium we lost our n equals 4 principal energy level and so now we can go back and do instead of argon let's do neon uh, 3s2 3p6 and then we add on our 3p5 and Here's where it's the highest value of n, s and p electrons only. So there are eight valence electrons. And we get Fe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with a three plus charge surrounding its brackets. This one with nickel, I want you to do it, and I'll be checking your lecture outline notes once you turn them in. Um, actually, I want you to do all three of these. This is good practice, and let me know if you have any questions.